The John Wick film series, directed by Chad Stahelski and starring Keanu Reeves as the titular character, has carved its niche in the action genre with its relentless pace, intricate fight choreography, and a captivating underworld. From its inception with John Wick in 2014 to the latest installment, John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum in 2019, each chapter is marked by moments that have become iconic in the realm of modern action cinema. Parabellum Let's delve into some of the best moments from each chapter, encapsulating the essence of John Wick's journey through a world of high-stakes assassinations, intricate alliances, and a code of conduct that makes this series stand out. John Wick Chapter 3 picks up minutes after where Chapter 2 left off, with John on the run as the clock ticks down to him being excommunicado in his world of assassins and their Kevlar designer suits. One cab ride later, John finds himself deep in the stacks of the New York Public Library, where a comically tall assassin named Ernest, played by NBA star Bobin Marjanovic, quotes Dante to our anti-hero before trying to kill him. A blur of punches and arm bars ends with Ernest taking a book to the jaw and throat before getting practically curb-stomped on it. The sequence is brief, but a perfect tone setter for what the threequel has in store for fans. The brutal action also adopts a more comical tone than those found in previous installments, with Ernest bringing a finger to his lips to shoosh John before pummeling him. After all, they are fighting in a library. John Wick goes from being about a mysterious widower mourning the loss of his wife to an action-packed tale of bullets and revenge with this brutal, Bourne-esque home invasion. Up until this point, audiences had no real idea what John Wick was capable of or how lethal and legendary his capabilities are. Unfortunately for the intruders and his home, John uses them as our visual aids. In breathtaking fashion, we realize why John has earned the mythic name of the boogeyman John and his home field advantage, make his masked attackers wish they never got out of bed as John uses point-blank gunshots to put them six feet under. The sequence's slow burn tension, coupled with Ree's unflinching commitment to what the action demands of him, make this one of the best first fights for an action hero the genre has ever done. After three movies, Lance Reddick's Karen the Continental's gentlemanly front desk clerk finally gets in on the action. Armed with Benelli brand rapid fire combat shotguns, Sharon and John stalk dark, stonewalled corridors for target practice and take out bad guys with ease. In a welcome departure to the other heightened action scenes that fuel Parabellum, this sequence is memorable for its less-is-more approach to the ensuing gunfight. The level of military precision to John and Sharon's movements helps peel back the curtain on the latter's background in a way that is more show than tell. By pairing Sharon with John, we see how formidable he is as the movie's bare-bones approach to this thrilling shootout full of inventive ways to reload a shotgun in the middle of a firefight results in an action-packed interlude that pushes both story and character with each foe that the duo takes out. John Wick Chapter 3 should just be called Crazy Action, the movie. It's as if every playtime adventure kids could have with action figures manifested here, with this movie's fresh take on a rain-slicked motorcycle chase proving to be one of the most entertaining things to come out of this series' seemingly endless imagination. Wick on horseback struggles to dodge and evade his sword-wielding pursuers and their motorbikes. One would think bringing a very long knife to an elaborate, high-speed gunfight would be a lackluster affair, but Parabellum leans into that potential hindrance and makes it one of the chase scene's greatest strengths. The swords force John and the filmmakers to get creative with their finishing moves and camera angles, respectively, with the latter staying on John through a series of mini-owners as he destroys his opponents while galloping on a horse. CG enhances the crazy stunt, but never detracts from its impact, especially when John gets into a sword fight at 60 miles an hour atop a motorcycle. The trailer for John Wick, Chapter 3 Parabellum promised us Hal Berry teaming up with Keanu Reeves and some canine pals for a fight, and the movie did not disappoint. Three movies in, and the bad guys still haven't caught on to the fact that you just don't mess with any of John's four-legged friends. Wick and Sophia, Barry. Teach them the error of their ways in a bullet-filled escape from a Casablanca fortress. At this point, fans have seen every way John can use a gun to ruin some vaguely European baddies' existence. 
so the filmmakers spice things up by throwing into the mix Sophia's pair of enemy-seeking German shepherds. When John's not dispensing headshots like Oprah gives away cars, the two dogs are chewing up or biting down on the poor bastards who get in their master's way. Audiences can't help but clap and cheer as man's best friends become the franchise's official mascot, especially when Sophia orders one to hold a human milk bone in its jaws until John can deliver one hell of a fatality. From the moment John and elite bodyguard Cassian, common, lock eyes in the middle of an open courtyard at a DJ concert, our knuckles go white around our chair armrests. They don't let go until several minutes later, after John has dispatched a small army of security personnel in the eerily lit catacombs. For most of this harrowing sequence, John is a fugitive from both the villainous Santino's wrath and his goons. After John kills Gianna, an important figure in his world, who half sacrifices herself before John's kill shot, our assassin must find increasingly complicated ways to evade his heavily armed pursuers before it's too late. The genius of this extended, rapid fire gun battle is what it shows about John as a tactician. He anticipated this outcome, so he prepared for it by hiding guns and various ammo belts strategically throughout this subterranean maze to give him a combat advantage. Basically, to paraphrase Watchmen's Rorschach, John's not locked in here with the bad guys. They are locked in there with him. Even better? The aftermath of this shootout, the first brawl between John and Cassian, Gianna's protector. The battle, which finds the two trading shots and fists through and over a row of parked cars, acts as almost an epilogue to the main event that is just as exciting as the catacomb set action. John punches, stabs, and shoots his way through and around the entrance to a subway in one of the franchise's more intricate and underrated sequences. After Santino calls in the hit on John, it's open season and several assassins want to collect all while Cassian is on John's tail. The fisticuffs John engages in finds him outmatched a few times, which adds to the tension. We know John is going to survive, but it gives us some thrills when we see how hard it is for him to make good on that expectation, especially when he is forced to confront a killer the size of a sumo wrestler. The, the gory but inventive way John finally dispatches his attacker is one of the film series' better laugh moments. The chase into and down a lit subway hallway culminates in a stabby showcase of John's prowess with a pencil, before John lurches into his next fight with Cassian. It starts with the two on different levels of the platform trading silenced pistol fire among a crowd of unsuspecting civilians before erupting into a vicious close-quarters knife fight aboard a moving subway train. John Wick 3 operates as if it was dared by the previous installments to top all that came before and it does just that with this one sequence.